It's Friday, Friday. I'm so glad it's Friday. Can you believe that today is already the end of the week? This week, we have been talking about David and how soul power, or Jesus, is greater than our enemies. Yesterday with Miss Trish, we talked about how King Saul had been rejected as king for disobeying uh, God and Samuel anointed David because he was a man after God's own heart. Did you know that he wrote a lot of the Psalms that are in our Bible? Well, our coloring page today is David playing the harp to remind us that we need to have hearts like King David, hearts like God, or hearts for God. So today is our review day, and we're going to review all of David with Mr. AJ. And we're going to go over all of our verses again for the whole week. Does anybody think that they can do all of the verses, all three? I want to see. Post a video of you saying them all on Facebook so we can cheer each other on as we memorize God's word. We also have another missions moment with Mulberry today. Now, you might be thinking, Miss Kelly, isn't that the same background that you used yesterday for Water Day? Well, you're right, but that's because our game today involves pool noodles. There are so many different games that you could come up with to play with, for, with pool noodles, and some of them don't even involve water. So if you don't have pool noodles, you can adapt any of the games by using a stick, or a paper towel tube, or really anything else that you can imagine. Again, I would love to see some of these on Facebook. I wanna see you guys playing these games or coming up with your own. Before we get started though, we're going to pray. Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for everyone who's here this week. We pray that you would help us learn a lot and that we would have a good, safe day. Amen. All right, we are going to sing Inside My Heart for the last time this week. We're gonna sing different songs next week. We're also gonna do Dancing on the Waves and Child of God. And we are singing Child of God in our Sunday service this week. So make sure to practice right now with us. Go ahead and stand up, guys. Big old ugly giant But David was not frightened He did not run away He walked into the battle With a slingshot and a pebble He said, I'll tell you something, devil Well, I am not afraid My God is big, big, big His love is wide, wide, wide And in my heart, heart, heart He lives inside, side, side he lives inside the heart He lives inside the heart the Deep inside the heart He lives inside, side, side Prayer was law to fight But Daniel kept on trying So they threw him with the lions Right about their supper time They were close enough to eat him We could smell their bad breath breathing but sure surprised those heathens When he came out alive My God is big, big, big His love is wide, wide, wide And in my heart, heart, heart He lives inside, side, side He lives inside my heart He lives inside my heart Deep inside my heart He lives inside, side, side His love is wide, wide, wide And in my heart, heart, heart He lives inside, side, side My God is big, big, big His 
Well, this week we've been talking about King David. We've been talking about how soul power is greater than our enemies. Last week, we talked about how soul power is greater than our circumstances. Um, and, you know, this week we looked at a lot of different things that King David had to deal with. Now, you know, the first day we talked about him being anointed. He had uh, Samuel come show up and pick him as the next king of Israel. And then the Holy Spirit came in him. And we learned that when, when God's picking people to use, he doesn't look at what they look like. David didn't look like a strong warrior. He was just a kid. Uh, but he looks at their heart, you know, on what's on the inside. And, you know, boys and girls, it's, it's important to remember that we have to work on our heart. You know, it doesn't matter what we look like, but if our heart is, is not aligned with what God wants, if our heart isn't good, uh, then God's not going to be able to use us the right way. We've got to make sure our hearts are in check. We've got to make sure that we love God and we are obeying him and doing all that he asks us to do. And we also saw that David was going to take on a bear and a lion. And eventually, what would he, else would he take on? Does anyone remember who was the big Philistine that David, David killed? That's right. He took on Goliath. You know, with God's help, uh, he threw that rock. He hit Goliath in the head and he came tumbling down. He died. And, you know, on that day, we learned that with God's help, uh, we can achieve big things with odds that seem like they're against us. And ultimately, for the glory of God. Uh, ultimately, you, you know, it's not us doing the great things. It's who doing the great things. That's right. It's God. It's the soul power in us that is doing the great things. And if we have faith in Christ, we can have that soul power. And we can, you know, we can take on whatever is against us, whatever our enemies are. That soul power is stronger than that. And then on Wednesday, we talked about how uh, Saul and David kind of met up. Saul was using the bathroom and David spared him. Uh, he showed mercy on him. And just as David spared Saul, Jesus spares us uh, from, you know, separation from him. You know, if, if we are not l trusting in God, we're going to uh, go to hell one day when we die. And, and God spares us from that if we choose to accept that gift from him. If we put our faith in Christ. You know, we are spared from eternal separation from God. We're spared from hell. Uh, so just like David spares Saul, God spares us from that if we trust in him. And then yesterday we took a look at the different ways the Holy Spirit may be speaking to us. It, you know, we, we saw how the Lord uh, rejected Saul as a leader because he disobeyed him. He disobeyed God's commands. And the Holy Spirit entered uh, David there. Uh, you know, and we can look for different ways that God is speaking to us. You know, when, when, when we're going through our life, guys, uh, God's going to put us in different positions. Uh, God's going to put you in different spots, kind of like how uh, in a game of chess, the, the pieces move in different spots, and they're all for a purpose. And God's going to put you in certain positions in your life to act, uh, sort of like David did. And we've got to be ready to hear and listen to what God is saying to us so we can act the right way, uh, so we can do what God is asking us to do. And, and, you know, if we don't act on that, we may miss out on opportunities that God has put in our life to do things for his glory. And we might uh, not always obey God, but we've got to make sure that we're listening to him. And if we don't obey God, that's part of life. But we got to remember to always try to always do our best to obey God. And God forgives us, but it should always be our heart to obey him in the best that we can. Uh, because he loves us and he wants what's best for us. And as, if we obey him, our lives are going to be working out in a great way because God has sort of positioned us for that. Does that sound good, guys? Are we going to be able to obey God this week? Do we feel like we're ready to take on our enemies because we've got soul power in us? Can I get a yes, Mr. AJ? Awesome, guys. So glad that you uh, joined us this week. And, and it's Friday, so you know what that means. We've got the Wahoo Wheel coming up. So let's, let's enjoy the rest of our Friday and the rest of this 4C Kids Camp. So glad to be with you, and we'll look forward to next week together. John 14, six. verse 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me.
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Matthew 5, 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Hi, I'm Chloe. About 10 years ago, my family and I went to Kazakhstan to adopt my baby sister. But she's not a baby anymore. That was some exciting times. And Kazakhstan is a really cool place. My dad and I made a video about our times there, and we want to share it with you. Check it out. Hi, my name is Chloe. It's Christmas time and I'm in Kazakhstan. adopting a new baby sister. You'll get to meet her later, but first, let me show you some really interesting things about this amazing country. Did you know that Cossacks don't celebrate Christmas? Isn't that sad? Actually, all these lights and festive decorations are for New Year's Eve. They celebrate New Year's Eve kind of like many of us would celebrate Christmas. This is what Christmas Day looks like in Kazakhstan. Everything is open and everyone is working. There's no baby Jesus, no manger, and no mention of the Savior of the world being born. That's because Kazakhstan is a Muslim country. But it's not like the Muslim countries you would find in Africa or the Middle East. You see, Kazakhstan used to be a part of the Soviet Union and worshiping any god was forbidden. So what comes out of that is a lost and empty way of life. It is not hard to see how sad and weary most of them are. They work very hard for very little, long days of selling their goods at market. There are people like this all over this city, selling seeds or socks for just pennies. Can you guess what this is? It's a big frozen lake. Come on, I'll show you. But let's get there the Kazakh way. That was fun! Do you see all these big plastic bags out on the lake? These are used as tents, and inside them are men ice fishing. Shh. Be very quiet. We don't want to scare the fish away. First, the man cuts a deep hole through the frozen lake, and then drops his line down into the water. He gets under his tent to stay warm and waits for a bite. He stays there for hours, sometimes all day long, to catch as many fish as he can. And voila, the end up here in the market where they are sold to people who are hungry for some fresh fish. The market is a great place to watch people, see what they are like and how they live. I was amazed to learn that they are out there almost every day of the year. Rain, snow, or sleet will not stop them. And the average temperature in this city is about 20 below zero. So if you come to Kazakhstan, you definitely need a good hat.
Because of the history and connection with Russia, you will find most of the people here speak Russian. Can you say спасибо? That means thank you in Russian. Спасибо. And пожалуйста means you're welcome. If you want to say thank you in traditional Cossack language, you would say rachmet. Although it is a Muslim country, it doesn't look like it. The people don't dress in traditional Muslim dress and they don't live by traditional Muslim customs. The people are friendly to Americans and love talking to us and hearing about our country. This gives us a great opportunity to tell them about Jesus. I think they would be very open to it. Today is a big day. I'm going to go get my baby sister. This is the orphanage where she has lived since she was born. You want to meet her? Let's go. I know one Kazakh person who's going to hear all about Jesus. That's for Danya. Goodbye. Welcome back. Friday, that means we're spinning the Wahoo Wheel again. If this is your first week with us, we get to spin this every Friday for Camper of the Week. But you have to say Wahoo when I spin it. You ready? One, two, three, Wahoo! Wahoo! I spun that one extra long. Candy! Candy! I want Grand Prize. T-shirt! T oh, T-shirt's <laughs> not a prize. Grand Prize! Grand Prize! Yes! I will contact your parents to find out what your favorite candy is and we'll right. get you some. I like Mike and Ike's. Ooh, that's yummy. Way to go, you guys! Don't forget to share pictures and videos of you playing either the pool noodle games or reciting your memory verses with us. And please don't forget, soul power is greater than our enemies, no matter what, all the time. I hope you guys all have an awesome weekend and we'll see you again on Monday. Bye.